and welcome back, Attorney Steve Vondren here. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. Okay, today we're going to be talking about a great topic, amending pleadings. Amending pleadings. What on earth are we talking about? Well, without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve Litigation Whiteboard. All right, here we are. Hope you guys are all off to a great start this week. I did a great tribute in my last video to Dr. Ken Revisa. It's the last video I posted. I want you to watch that. But more importantly, if you have a son, daughter, a child in sports or somebody needs help with mental training, Ken Revisa was my mental training master. He was a sports psychologist for the Angels and Dodgers. Check out that video. He's got a $100 package. You get access to all his materials and it is really, really great. Okay, so without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve Litigation Whiteboard. We are talking today about amending pleadings. So a pleading could be like your complaint, okay? It could be your answer to the complaint. A lot of different documents could be amended in court. Something changes, new information, new news, new facts comes up. You have a new witness, they tell you something new, something you may need to amend your pleadings, okay? So how does this go? Here's the general rule. Let's, and we're going to talk about a, just a complaint today to make it nice and easy, okay? This happens all the time. You see a complaint filed. You see a first amended complaint. You see a second amended complaint. You see a third amended complaint. This happens all the time. I think I've seen them as high as fourth amended complaint. But the typical rule is you get the plaintiff. The plaintiff gets one free bite at the apple, one free bite. That means when you file your complaint, be or before the other party files their answer or their motion to dismiss in federal court or their demur motion to dismiss also in state court arizona they called a motion to dismiss motion to strike anything like that you can amend your complaint so sometimes what happens you file the complaint the other party says hey what's this i you know i'm not quite understanding what you got here or your cause of action doesn't contain all the elements or maybe you're alleging fraud and you're forgetting all the elements or you're forgetting to bleed plead scienter, scienter, right? Um, so you get a free chance. Judges aren't gonna stop you. You get one free bite, go ahead and just amend it. Easy does it, easy done, okay? So that's your complaint, one free bite. Now, if the defendant has already answered, let's say, or filed a motion to dismiss or something, you may need to seek leave to amend, okay? So I have leave to amend. Leaving, uh, seeking leave to amend, that's a motion, okay? That's what we call a noticed motion, okay? To the court, you're seeking leave to amend. So you're saying, judge, uh, they've already answered, I am seeking leave to amend the complaint. Something popped up, I should have put it in there, I had it, should have had it in there. Now, first of all, I have over here, stip. Stip. This stands for stipulation. So you may want to see if the, uh, before you waste all your time, you may want to see if your opposing counsel will just stipulate to it, okay? That way they agree to it and you, f you file a form with the court. Hey, we've agreed to allow the amendment, uh, a stipulation, okay? Now, if they won't stipulate and they say, no, 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 that's, that's BS, I'm not going to go for it, there's a meet and confer process. Um, that's where you, the attorneys get on the phone zoom call or whatever the case may be and they used to uh, like that people would get in in person together but not so much with COVID. so you seek a stip if that doesn't go down you meet and confer you have a talk about it in central district of california federal court you need to wait seven days after that meet and confer to go ahead and actually file your motion your mo uh, memorandum of points and authorities your declaration by your counsel any other declarations and your proposed amendment here, as I have it, you just, you're gonna be marking up, showing the judge what you're changing from your original complaint, add any exhibits you have. So it's pretty simple. Um, you got your complaint, you're gonna amend, but in Southern District of California, you gotta wait seven days after the meet and confer, you don't get the stip. What was that? Gotta wait, <laughs> gotta wait seven days to, to actually go ahead and file your motion. Now check your local rules, they're gonna change everywhere you're at, everybody's got their own rules. This is not legal advice. This is not a substitute for legal advice, so make sure you're checking your own rules, okay? Now, let's take a look here. Okay, so what may what may they want to add? A plaintiff may want to add a party. They do a deposition, they find out, hey, there's a new party should have been in the case we didn't know. Or let's say maybe they wanna add a John Doe defendant. You sue in your caption of your complaint, you're suing John Doe defendants. You say, I know who John Doe is now, or Jane Doe, okay? 
Um, so you're adding a new party, a fictitious defendant. Um, adding new claims or causes of action. A lot of times in federal court, we're talking about claims. In state courts, you may be talking about causes of action, okay? There can be a distinction there. Check your rules. You may want to substitute parties. Ah, I had the wrong party. We had the wrong party. It was actually the web designer that was, is the bad person here, something like that. And you may, in a lot of cases I deal with, they may want to say, well, we found 20 more infringements. We want to add 20 more copyright infringements, for example. So it could be anything that you want to amend the complaint. And again, you either seek the stipulation, that's usually a good first step, call up the other attorney, hey, would you stip to this? Yes, no, let's meet and confer. Let me tell you my reasons why we need it. You can tell me your reasons you don't need it. Now, here's some of the potential objections, some potential reasons why you would say, no, um, I'm not. I'm going to oppose this uh, leave to amend. I'm going to oppose that. Here's a few of the common ones. Check your rules again. Every, every jurisdiction is going to be a little different. Um, feudal, number one, the amendment would be feudal. Maybe you're adding a, an old car crash case that had a year of statute of limitations and it's now you're two years later. Um, now you could have a potential problem. It's like you're bringing something that's literally barred. Now bear in mind, I have down here, amendment relates back. Sometimes your amendment, let's say the judge says, yes, I will grant that. It will relate back to the date that you filed your complaint. So remember, uh, the doctrine of relate back, that's a good bar school one, okay? That's a very good bar school one for your bar takers. Um, that may be one grounds that you want to file to oppose. Undue delay, sometimes this other opposing car, uh, parties are, oh, I keep stepping on this thing. Um, but there's undue delay, say something's just taken forever and they just keep dragging the case on and on, excuse me and they just keep dragging the case on and on, you may want to object and say, judge, this is just one big uh, delay tactic. It's been going on and on. They're just running up the hours, doing all this. They could have done it a long time ago. Uh, material prejudice, maybe this amendment, maybe you have someone in the hospital. These are just examples, by the way, and they're not gonna be around. So you amend the complaint and this case is going on and on and on. Nobody knows when it's gonna end. It may materially prejudice your client, this is another really good grounds. And, and focus on the word material, have something to it, not just, you know, ah, it's gonna be inconvenient to answer, not, not something like that. And bad faith, it's being brought in bad faith, emotions being brought in bad faith, you can figure out facts on that. You may have agreed to some cutoff dates earlier in the litigation, especially in federal court, you may have agreed to some, some cutoff dates and now they're trying to amend past the cutoff dates that even they set, that even they agree to early on in the case, like in a case management or, or scheduling conference. Okay, so that's another one. And finally, discovery abuse, harass, annoy, embarrass, all the normal stuff you usually see. That's all they're doing it for, just to harass, embarrass, delay, materially prejudice my client. Why didn't they bring this earlier? They knew the facts earlier, okay? Those kinds of things. And here in your declaration, your, your counsel, when you're filing the motion, you got your proposed amended complaint so the judge can see. You got your noticed motion. You're gonna send that and serve it on all parties. You got your memorandum of points and authorities, and you'll have some of this, you know, uh, right to amend is granted freely in the interests of justice but subject to these potential defenses. Now, if you defend and you say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oppose, judge is gonna, there's gonna be a hearing date. Like for example, in California, in Central District of California, I'm just only going over that because I do a lot of work there. Central District, you have to oppose within 21 days of the date of the motion. So if the motion set at the end of the month, you gotta, you gotta file your opposition 21 days before the hearing date, okay? Um, judge grants it, it says, okay, I'm gonna grant it in the interest of justice. You need to either answer it or you can file a motion to dismiss, motion to strike, those kinds of things, okay? Basic, you're right back at, you're right back at the same thing. If you don't answer, you're gonna get a default, it could go into a default judgment. So that's the basics of it. Uh, when you talk, it's not, sometimes it sounds real scary. Ah, oh, you gotta amend the complaint. Uh, but it's really just, again, it's more paperwork, um, you're citing your case law, getting your objections out there, having proper grounds for doing it, filing the proper procedure, and again, don't overlook the steps. See if you can get the step. Many times the opposing counsel 
We'll give you the step, and boom, you're off to the races, okay? Attorney Steve, litigation whiteboard. If you need help with civil litigation, intellectual property, business law, contracts, that kind of thing, you know where to find us. On the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. Have a great day, you all. And don't drink this much coffee. It's uh, going to make you a little jittery. So have a good day. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, boom, thumbs up. Um, I'm starting to put some merch down there. Don't be afraid to start looking around my merch. You're going to see that pop up this year. One of my goals. But have a great day. I got more great videos coming this year. Make sure to subscribe to get those videos. Okay, bye now. I got to run. I got to work.